Hi there, Unitic, aka Logan here. It's uh, July the 15th, 2014. It's my first video in a while. And uh, today felt like the day to catch you all up on what's going on in my life and uh, what's hopefully upcoming in my life. It's a special day to me because it was one year ago today, right about now, it's just a little past noon, Eastern time that I was saying goodbye to my good friend David Klein. Uh, he was getting ready to leave the Appalachian Trail after we'd spent a couple of days um, trekking south after we'd summited Mount Katahdin in Maine, the northern terminus of the Appalachian Trail on July the 13th. And uh, David and I, a year ago today, had just made it back to a little camp store on the edge of Baxter State Park after we'd spent the previous night a few miles out into an area called the 100 Mile Wilderness in Maine. And our plan was David was going to hike through that 100 miles with me before he came back to Louisville, but he got sick and um, we didn't know it at the time, but it was actually a recurrence of his long-term battle with leukemia. He uh, was almost seven years past his bone marrow transplant and uh, this was only the second time that David had been cleared to go out and camp out. We had, uh, had camped out the previous fall. He and I were planning this Appalachian Trail through hike for me. He was my planning partner, my number one cheerleader, and my dear friend. And I couldn't have done that hike without him. So when he got sick that night, the night of July the 14th, we knew the next day we had to hike back out and get him back to medical attention. And, and we made it back to this camp store. And if you visit my uh, relatively new website at uh, www.journeythrough.thru, journey through Lyme, one word together, dot com, journeythroughlime.com. On the home page, you'll see a picture of David and I together as he was getting ready to get on the shuttle to go back to Millinock at Maine and seek medical attention. And I didn't know it at the, at the time, neither did he, that that was the last time we would ever see each other. We spoke by phone multiple times each week um, via text and email. We stayed in touch. He sent me supplies and gear and kept my spirits up. Um, I couldn't have done that trip without his help. Unfortunately, um, we never got to hike anymore that fall as he needed to seek medical attention. And uh, it was about a month later where he shared with me that, that he was really sick with the leukemia again. And he passed just a couple of weeks after I got off the trail um, when he was down in Houston at MD Anderson Medical Complex. and. Uh, I never got to see him again. By the time I made it back into Louisville, he was heading back down to Houston and he was, he was very sick at that point. And David was a warrior like no one I'd ever known before or since. He'd been fighting for his life off and on for 18 years prior. And David, as anybody who knows him could testify, was a figure larger than life. Even with all the battles that he struggled with, all the physical limitations, he lived life every day. He exuded life. He would put smiles on people's faces. He might put a frown here or there too, but mostly smiles. And he just kept coming at life. And I think about that when I'm having a hard time. And I, and I did on the trail too. And I wanted to honor him and his memory on this, the one, one year anniversary of our, our parting and, uh, and share what I'm going to do next. I kept telling David that fall that he and I had more work to do together. I just had a gut instinct that that was the truth and it is because he's never left me. I talk to him just about every day and the work that I think he's going to help me do is a continuation of what I tried to do on the Appalachian Trail and that was speak the truth as I know it and that truth flows from 20 plus years of dedicated research trying to make sense of why the world is the way it is. Lyme disease happened to be a very very personal experience for me 
that brought home some conclusions that were already in my wheelhouse, already in my consciousness. This was just a very up close and personal experience of some things that seem really, really off in our world. So I started a blog on that website and I'm writing about these kinds of things. I'm, I'm talking about Lyme disease, but I'm talking about it in the context of um, a greater understanding of all the out of balance things that seem to be taking place and have for a very, very long time in not just our country, but around the world. So I'm, I'm announcing in this video and in a blog post that will be up when this video goes on YouTube that I'm going to try and hike all the way across the country on something called the American Discovery Trail in 2015. It's about 5,000 miles from Delaware to California, 14 states just like the Appalachian Trail, but most of this um, trail, it's a, it's a composition of existing trails and roads and forest paths. Um, it's much more in civilization, if you will, passing through small towns and large. It goes right through Cincinnati, Ohio, just north of uh, where I live here in Louisville, Kentucky, and through southern Indiana, where Gabe and I, my son, went on our very first father-son backpacking trip on the American Discovery Trail in Harrison Crawford State Forest in southern Indiana back in probably about 2000. The trail itself just opened up in the mid-1990s, and the reason I'm choosing it is because it cuts across this entire country and the topics that I want to talk about on video and I want to write about have to do with all of us. And they have to do with telling the truth. And I'm calling it my trek for truth. And my blog post is trekking for truth. And I'm going to share whatever insights I have based on the research that, that I've done personally and the research of literally thousands of people all over this planet that have had that same inner knowing that I've had to my earliest memories that something just wasn't lining up, something wasn't right in the way society um, was operating. And I'm definitely not alone in that feeling. There are millions of people that have that knowing all over this planet and there's some amazing folks out there writing books, doing documentaries, writing blogs, giving lectures, um, sharing information that I think is desperately needed to be shared at this time. And I feel really, really compelled to do whatever little contribution I can to continue putting that kind of information out there. No matter if it means some people think I'm a whack job, that really isn't my concern anymore. I'm not trapped in that prison of other people's thoughts and, and, and my concerns about them. Um, so I'm going to start hiking and talking and writing and I'm going to do a lot more videos that aren't me talking to the camera, but me talking with the people I meet because even on the AT, the families that put me up overnight, the folks I met in coffee shops and grocery stores and all along the trail, it was really heartening to me to hear how many people had these same kind of feelings and these same frustrations and the same desire to make things better. This desire to see other people thrive and have a healthy and happy and balanced life, which is all most of us, the vast majority of us want for ourselves, our loved ones, our neighbors, our friends, and our uh, fellow travelers on this planet. And many of us are so confused why if the vast majority of people want that and nothing more for their fellow human beings, why aren't we seeing that being the shared experience of humanity? So that's what I'm going to be talking about. Um, when I was on the trail, I kept having this recurring vision whenever I would ponder the question, what am I doing next? And I kept seeing the scenes from Forrest Gump, the movie Forrest Gump, where Forrest is kind of frustrated with a lot of the same things I'm just expressing. And he puts on his running shoes and puts on a cap and just starts running day after day, week after week, month after month, until he has a long scraggly beard that looks pretty darn similar to the ones that most male Appalachian through hikers sport by the end of five or six months. 
his was a little darker than mine. I looked like skinny Santa, as many people pointed out to me. But when I thought about what to do next, what kept coming to mind is just keep walking. Keep walking, keep talking. It doesn't make a lot of rational sense to give up all my possessions and sell the last of them, including my vehicle, and try to at least fund the first few months of walking across this country. But I can't think of anything else that makes any more sense to me in light of some of the topics that I've written about already and talked about on camera. So I'm going to share it with you if you have an interest, and I hope you do. And I hope you'll subscribe to my blog at www.journeythroughlime.com. On the home page, on the right-hand side, if you scroll down, you can enter your email address, and you'll get an email whenever I put a new blog post up. I hope you'll read this current one, Trekking for Truth, that goes into more detail about what my plan is and some of the research that, uh, that I feel compelled to share. Uh, you can also subscribe on my YouTube channel and you'll get an email whenever I upload a video. And that's just on YouTube under my given name, Logan, L-O-G-A-N, McCulloch, M-C-C-U-L-L-O-C-H. And um, you can also reach me via email at unitic, U-N-I-T-I-C, 2013, at gmail.com. So I'm going to close... Uh, now and and uh, and sign off with um, our family motto, our McCulloch family motto that meant a great deal to my father. He was very proud of our Scottish heritage, and he had our coat of arms with this motto and hanging in his office for as long as I remember. And he had it on a signet ring that we gave to my son Gabe when my dad passed uh, in uh, in March of 2013. And the motto is Vi et Animo, which translates to strength and courage, heart and soul. And I wish that for each, each of you, that in these troubling times, you find your own inner strength and courage, and you bring your own heart and soul to this world when we most need to express that side of ourselves, that deeper side of ourselves. And... Uh, I look forward to connecting with more of you all in the months and, and year to come, and I'll keep you posted on what's next. But for, for today, I'm going to sign off there and hope you'll go and, and read uh, my blog entry and leave me a comment, send me a note, and, uh, and keep in touch. So take care.